Grand Final of Qualifier number 5 at the X Cup Summer. Battlefield of Eternity is the first map and we got the Bang Bush going up against Oxygen Esports. This is actually the first qualification tournament for the summer season where Chili Mountain didn't make it into the Grand Final when they played in the tournament. They actually lost in the semi-final to the Bang Bush, so kudos to the Bang Bush. They stepped it up and were able to win the series. Good for them. Now it's up to Oxygen to see if they can bring them down. And for Oxygen it's also an interesting situation because as I explained previously in the semi-finals, Oxygen has not participated in a single qualifier just yet. The whole concept with the X Cup is designed so that teams don't have to play in all of the qualifiers. There's 10 qualifiers in total and you can participate in as many of them as you want. And every time that you make it into the later rounds of the tournament, you gather points, you get more points the farther you proceed throughout the tournament. And those points are getting added up and the top 8 teams at the end of the season, at the end of the 10 qualification tournaments, they then make it into the playoffs so in the playoffs you have 4,000 euros of prize money that are up for grabs thanks to mr x our anonymous sponsor hence the x cup and the teams obviously all want to get a piece of that action and uh, all that pizza money so uh, with that all those dirty esports dollars so with that we're gonna have team oxygen really trying to win this one since both chili mountain bang bush and all the other teams already gathered a few points they still have to do that but a win in this tournament would go a long way to not only get them into a spot for the playoffs but also start to immediately position themselves a little bit towards the top of the ranking now, Tyrael gets banned. They played it quite a bit. One of the things for the Bang Bush is also that they could, of course, watch the series that Oxygen Esports played previously against um, against the Cats. So they saw everything with Sergeant Hammer. They saw everything with Tyrael, and they were like, yeah, well, maybe we should eliminate both of those during the draft here. No more judgment shenanigans. No more Hammer sieging in. So instead, we got Copenhagen with Blaze as his first pick. Here right off the bat. Also, again, a quick note that Lauber doesn't play with the team today. I think he has some kind of commitment Sundays. He played. They didn't play last week Sunday either. Instead, they played with Nagrom, and they do the same here today. He's playing on the Smurf account here. So that's Nagrom on the front line for the Bang Bush. Work out for them today. Gotta say. So, yeah, Hanzo is out. Brightwing is out as well. And let's go for the double pick. Lucio for Yasu. Yeah, he's uh, Lucio. Yasu's Lucio is really, really strong. Usually doesn't get to play it though, but today he has a shot at him. Yeah, we get Mirrodin for Bad Benny. So Mirrodin is obviously an absolute staple right now. Doesn't matter if you're talking about Dragonshire, if you're talking about Towers of Doom, or if you're talking about Battlefield of Eternity, even on other maps where he might not get immediately as much value, he's still a very, very solid pick. And here we have it. The quick lock on Lunara as the next ban. Still have Trace up, still have Genji up. No Anduin this time for Oxygen. Kind of have to highlight that because, well, they played a lot with Anduin in the semifinals and even before that to try and execute Light Bomb engages. No Leyline in an Apocalypse either now that Medivh has been banned since... Swam Grotta busted out his Medivh a bit earlier. Teams are starting to get a bit more cautious. Remembering that that was actually a real nice one. And there's Sylvanas and uh, Rega. So, yep. Sylph is in the house for bishops. Since he doesn't get his Hanzo. Hanzo obviously being banned. Sylvanas is his uh, second. And Rega, of course. I'll say. Oh. Jimmy! He's back! He's back! Hail to the king, baby! Jimmy is back in the house. I gotta love when he was a regular pick on Battlefield of Eternity. He has a bit of a niche map for him because of Exterminator. And he has completely disappeared again. But Jimmy makes it into the draft. So they don't go for Li Ming. They go, don't go for Vala or other heroes that they could have picked in that situation. Greyman comes to mind too. Instead, we have Jim Rayner in the house. And together with that, we get Thrall. So another potential for Trash Lightning. Even if they don't, there's more damage at the front. That's a lot that can protect Jimmy too. And, well, Skog is our final pick for the blue team. And it is Mayev. So, guys, map number one in the grand final of qualifier number five. Let's go. Battlefield of Eternity. On the left side, the Bang Bush with Henning on Rega. Bishops on Sylvanas. Swamp Grotta playing Hogger. 
Nagrom on Diablo and Skok on Maiev. On the right side of the map, it's Bad Benny with Muradin. We get Copenhagen on Blaze. And though, look at that. We actually don't have Exterminator. It's Ace in the hole after all. I was talking about it a second ago because we have so many slows on the other side. But to be absolutely frank, with Battlefield of Eternity being the map, I really didn't think that he would go for that talent, no matter how many slows they have. But yes, they are focusing more on the team fights and just locking the Immortal in. We have Thrall going for Rolling Thunder. So, Yazu with uh, Lucio. But it's they, they switch things up a little bit. So, Nick is playing Rainer, and he wants to go for the damage here. So, very curious how this is going to work for them now. Because, of course, they have a lot of stuns, a lot of slows that they can use to get additional damage out for Nick. But he still is a bit of a liability in the sense that he does... Yeah, well, that. <laughs> exactly. Exactly that. The problem with Jimmy is just him... Uh, yeah? Okay. Diablo just full-on Sudoku here. Full-on Sudoku by Diablo. So he goes down, just dashes through the wall. And, well... Is it a bug? Is it a feature? <laughs> we'll never really know. But okay, either way, the one thing that I really wanted to highlight here real quickly is that, of course, the problem with Jimmy is still that he has the mo he's lacking the mobility where once that you catch him, he has a very tough time staying alive. He has a couple of things like his E that he can use to an extent, but he doesn't have any escape tools outside of maybe dropping a penetrating round and trying to push you away from him, like here. But that only works so far, so much. So he already died, so they got two kills here very quickly. And I don't know, it's going to be interesting to see what they can do with him. My initial response or thought was really, okay, this is going to be an exterminator game. They're going to try and burn the immortal down. But now that they are going to try and exploit with Ace and the whole all of the stuns and slows that they have, this also means that they have to focus a bit more on those team fights, And that makes it an interesting, an even more interesting pick than it otherwise would be. They let a lot of other picks go that they could have chosen here. They could have gone for Vala with an arrow build, they could have gone for Greymane, or they could have gone for Li Ming if they really wanted to have a ranged damage dealer that is good against the Immortal. I mean, God, even Chromia has been played a lot more than Jimmy here. But it seems like Nick really believes in the pick and we'll see if that's justified or if the Bang Bush is now going to murder them and punish them for that particular choice. So, as you can see, top side, we got Bishops and Nagrom. Nagrom actually hiding in the shadows a bit, waiting for Hazu to move out so that he can attack him. First objective is up. So, Stax is there. But, yep, now we got the Behemoth Armor. We got the Incinerator Gauntlet. And Sylvanas actually fell. Well, hello. So, Jimmy with a kill. Yeah, apparently Nick already trying to bring this back a little bit. Okay, good for him. So the camp timing was still solid, and well, it's time for the Immortals to spawn. Sylvia's is going to be back. Sylvanas is back to business, and well, objective number one. Let's go. And Jimmy has always been a pretty straightforward character. He's obviously played a lot more when you're looking then towards Storm League, towards Quick Match, and especially lower leagues, but he can pack a punch. If you let him do whatever he wants to do, he can absolutely crush it. And he's currently working it through there. Stuns are coming out on both sides. As now Nakrom is trying to ensure that Blaze is going to fall. And he does, but so might... Oh my god, Diablo. He made it out with a sliver of health. As we have Thrall die a second later to Sylvana. So now another double kill against Oxygen Esports. And the Bang Bush is really opening this up with quite the bang here. Four kills to zero and a lot of action and aggression. With big damage coming in against the Immortal now too. As they're slowly starting to take that down. Another play being made, this time for Benny. And Muradin is on the run and gets away. Wow. Trade already kicking in. Slum Grotta has no hopes of catching him anymore. But both teams are now attempting to just take the Immortal down to 50%. It's a winner for the blue team by a small margin. 1,200 hit points remain. And yes, here we go. Little bit of a move straight in for uh, Diablo, as it seems. Muradin hopping in, hopping out. There's the tether, but he's still fine. 
Gets caught on the debris here. Hoga just pogging it out like a boss with big damage from Svamkarotas on the right side. It's Hazops who does the damage against the Immortal. But it's a winning move for Bang Bush. They win objective number one. The Immortal in their hands. The early level seven talent. So, not too bad. Yep. Can now move towards the top and see what else they can pull off here. Can they, for example, push straight through the wall for uh, the fort? That's what we're going to have to find out now. Taking the fort down would be the dream. Dropping into 50% HP should be what you at least are aiming for. 10 stacks for the Behemoth's armor. Obviously going to be important for Nick to stack this as much as he can so that they have the additional hit point boost now too. But yes. There you go. They burn that down very, very quickly here. But Sylvanas is, of course, enhancing this push further. So um, Kurota was trying to come in from the side, and they might get the entire thing, and indeed they do. The fort is down. Initially a great defense, but then with Sylvanas moving in and helping out, that fort didn't stand a chance. So now the rotation down to the bottom of the map once more, since they're hoping to get some free damage in as well. The wall has already fallen, so it's all about the fort itself now. But Lucio has also sped up things just a little bit. And instead, they're making a play for the camp. Svamgrota is getting dizzy from all that spinning here today. Yeah, spin to win, baby. And spin he does. Okay. So, with that, we now have the move for... The, they're actually going to get this one if they focus. I mean, Blaze is at the top lane. It's a 5 versus 4, everybody. So, they try to go for the death on Bad Benny. And boy, Bangbush today. They are in great shape. And they're getting that fort for completely free. So, two forts down on the red team side, and that draft is just not working out. And the problem is also that there's a gap opening up an experience between the two teams. Once they have level 10, I honestly don't really know what they can do with it. They took the forts down. I don't see them going deep enough to get those keeps. I love that Blaze, by the way, is just hiding over here. He realized there was a rotation coming, and instead just said, you know what, I am going to hide in plain sight. Well, not in plain sight, but I'm just going to hide at the top left and try to escape there, or this is not going to go well for me. So that worked out. But here comes level 10, and I guess with that, they're going to just grab the halftime show on the Immortal. There's nothing else to do, honestly. They're not going to be able to take the camp on the right side, as it's already getting attacked. So halftime show victory is probably the best that they can hope for. And even that is just going to be super close, given that in experience, Oxygen Esports is catching up. If there was a fort on the map, I swear they would have gone for it. But I have no idea why they're giving them this fight. Why would you do that? One kill, two kills. It's a triple, baby! They get three kills, and you know what? Because it was so beautiful, they're going to watch it again. Why give them this fight? I don't get it. Right there, 10 versus 9. Here comes the dive. Obviously, they didn't have vision, but they had to assume something was up. And that was a big grab. Three heroes die, and that is now an even bigger lead for the Bangbush in experience. And they are trying to go for a big Immortal Shield now, too. So, five kill difference. Big push also, by the way, in the bot lane with catapults and the camps here. So, this is doing some serious damage as well. Oxygen Esports is trying to bring this back through their ults, but can they? That's the big question right now. Uh, Diablo is trying to turn this around and immediately comes in with even further damage. The Immortal is low, and keep that bot lane in mind. This is going to get rough. Very nicely done by the blue team. I mean, honestly, they're having a fantastic moment here. They're dominating this game from start to finish. They're the ones calling the shots here. It's not a full slapdown or anything yet, but they are in full control. And, of course, Oxygen Esports is trying to turn around against them. That's why they are moving in for Skog now. But the Ancestral keeps him alive, jumps out, and good damage from Jimmy as well. Gotta give it to Nick. Damage after damage point being pressured out here. Benny, how the fuck is he alive? What? That's insane. Problem is the bottom keep. Take a look at the minimap. The bottom keep is falling and it's losing hit points quickly. That's the price they're paying here. And this is actually, this might be the end of the keep. So they are sacrificing a lot for this fight. And if they are not winning in big time, then it's just not worth it. Honestly, even if they win the fight, it's not worth it. You're trading a keep for what? For maybe getting a fort? Now, if they get Diablo, at least they got another kill. But that bottom keep is nearly gone. Nobody's moving down there. We have two catapults in. They could have saved this one, but it will fall. The keep is going to fall. And even if they win... I mean, honestly, guys, even if they're winning this, uh, this Immortal now, 
What the hell is that gonna do? The cut up the keep is gone. Even if you win the immortal, the maximum shield that you have is 3,000 hit points. I have no idea what just happened here. They should have just abandoned it at some point. Yes, the immortal is gonna do a lot of damage, but it's still gonna happen. So oxygen esports is in real trouble here. That was not a good choice. That really wasn't a good choice. I don't know what happened there. If they just blanked and didn't realize it. Or if they really felt, okay, we need to commit to this fight. But this early in the game, even if they are turning it around and win the Immortal, it's not going to do anything for them. And now they lost the keep and they lost the Immortal. They didn't even win that one. They're down a talent. They are reduced to a single keep on the map. And now we got a big push coming in through the top lane, which could result in them losing their second keep. They should lose the second keep. Sylvanas is on the other side. Unless they get a quick kill, there's no way for them to save it. Especially since they're talent down. So Oxygen Esports definitely with a bit of a blunder here in game number one. Here comes Earthquake. They're trying to get a turn. But it's Lucio that falls. Benny. Benny hops out and he gets away. But I got news for you. The keep cannot run. Nope. They're stationary. I know shocking developments here. More news at 11. But after we now have Blaze and Jimmy dying, this might not even be keep. It might even be game. They're going for one kill after another. Three heroes are dead. Lucy will be back in time, but the Immortal is still doing damage. And Bang Bush is just absolutely murdering here. What a slaughter. I mean, Jesus. After taking Chili Mountain down, they are not wasting any time with the victory in game number one of the grand final against Oxygen Esports. Like hot butter through cheese, they're absolutely melting the opposition and lock in the victory on Battlefield of Eternity. Before we head into game number two, make sure that you subscribe to the channel if you haven't done it yet so you don't miss out on any future content here on Calder TV. There's a theme today. I don't know what to tell you, but apparently we're starting things on either Battlefield of Eternity or on Infernal Shrine. So it's always a Diablo themed map and then we're moving in Towers of Doom as our second. And that's happening here now as well. So here we go. We have Towers of Doom and I'll chalk it up to the draft just not working out the way that they intended. But oh my god, did Oxygen Esports just get spanked. Rumor has it that they are playing this game standing because their ass hurts so much after the spanking they received on the first map. Because Bangbush just, I mean, they clapped them hard, boy. From start to finish, it felt like the Bangbush was in control. And of course, there was a certain snowball that happened as well towards the first Immortal. Or after that, it just felt like, okay, this is something that you still can recover from. And then when level 10 happened, you know, like that fight where they lost three, that was already a bad sign. But it was still something where if you win the battle, maybe you can do something. And jeez, then losing the keep at the bot lane because you're trying to win the second Immortal. Uh, wow. So, yeah, th things didn't work out for Team Oxygen, but I honestly also feel it would be a disservice to just simply say, like, yeah, well, this is just what's going to happen here. They are just better than that. I mean, technically, as I said, Oxygen Esports is the number two team in Europe. The Hardos, as they've formerly been known and probably will be known again in the future, they have been the ones to battle it out over and over and over again with Team, wah, aka Chili Mountain now, for the top spot and usually the uh, former was able to win but now Bangbush is making some big moves here they did not only kick out Chili Mountain of the tournament in the semi-final but now they have a chance to decide this one in their favor and lock in first place and therefore the most points that you can get in a qualifier for the ranking for Oxygen Esports participating in the uh, grand final is already a big win it means that they're going to get quite a few points and will get a top 8 position at least for now for the time being but yeah still interesting they were hoping for the victory here, but that first game... Uh... So we got a Blaze opening. Diablo again for Nagrom, and we get Hogger for Svamgrotta. Alright, so... Sergeant Hammer hasn't been banned. Technically an option. These Anduin games with Light Bomb could also still be executed by Oxygen Esports. They did that a lot in the semis. Could do it again if they wanted to. Hano, Hanzo? Oh, nah. And there is Anduin. Alright. The Robin of the Nexus. 
Like, I don't know. He's either Nicarda or he's Robin. Either way, he's a beta. So, that's just what it is. He has a little bit of a Brad Pitt vibe to him as well. But then again, every single time you know I think about Brad Pitt, he has like some really awesome movies. Like, Troy was pretty good. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's not the best movie of all time. But it's like one of those popcorn flicks, you know, that you can easily enjoy and watch. It was pretty badass in, in there. And then you have like some fun ones, Mr. and Mrs. Smith and all of this other stuff. So, I don't really think that it necessarily fits. I mean, the face is a bit the same. But yeah, he's not quite as beta as the other two that I pointed out a bit earlier. And Anduin, he just can't be. Nah, nah, he's, he's a total beta. So yeah. Uh, quick drop on uh, Mediv again. I mean, after they watch the semi final, they just like ban out Mediv. And I really get it because Swam Grota has shown once more why for a long time he was one of those players that you regularly ban Mediv out again. These days, it doesn't happen all that much. But yeah, I like that they adjust. Uh, Rega and Lunara. All right. Yeah, with that, yeah. Henning with nice burst heal, especially for he had some we had some really really nice heals by the way with Rega already. So yeah, and that leaves us with Benny and with Nick. So moment of truth. Are we gonna get maybe another Mirrodin? But more importantly, what do we get for Nick? That's the bigger one. Genji, Genji Anduin. Okay, they go a little bit old school here. So we have Tyrael, we got Blaze. So very cool draft. Standard draft, but cool. You have Tyrael, Blaze, the double layer of defense with the sanctification and with the bunker. Technically, if you want to get aggressive, you can go into uh, into Judgment. But more importantly, Light Bomb with Genji, Swift striking in. That leaves us with Skok, the final pick. Map number two. The chance for the Bang Bush to win the qualifier. And they pick my F again. Let's go. Second map of the best of three. Heroes. Bang Bush in the lead against Team Oxygen as Henning plays Rega, Nagrom on Diablo, Skok on my F, Swamp Grotta on Hoga, and Bishops on Lunara. Okay, we got on the right side, Oxygen Esports with Copen on Blaze, Bad Benny on Tyrael, Nick on Genji, and Hazuops is playing Hanzo as Yasu plays Anduin. And just after I called him for a second, I talked about like alphas and betas and also about Brad Pitt a little bit, and all of a sudden the entire Twitch chat was sharing their favorite Brad Pitt movie. It's actually nasty how many good movies that guy was in. Glorious Bastards, Snatch was mentioned, Fight Club obviously, Ocean's Eleven... And yeah, so much good stuff. The interesting uh, thing is actually that the more v movies were mentioned, the more you realize how garbage Hollywood is these days because they're just coming in with another sequel and prequel and origin story and all of that crap. And yeah, all of these amazing movies that we had in the past are just gone. Doesn't mean like you can't find the occasional gem these days, but it's crazy. I mean, one of the best movies, as I already said recently, that if you just want to have some entertainment, you know, was Maverick. And even that was a sequel. So it was surprising how good it was because I expected a lot worse. But it's kind of sad that when it comes to original ideas, there's not a lot happening. Again, every now and then you get a bit of a gem. But if you compare it with a lot of the movies of old, it is pretty crass to see what kind of a difference that is. But either way, now as we're heading into our second game here, yeah, the action continues and this time it seems that Team Oxygen is willing to be a bit more aggressive in the early game. They're getting a kill on Hogga and they nearly got another one on my F, but they might still be able and they are to take down Diablo. Nice! Two kills to zero in the early game, so they come out there with a bang. They're banging in the bush a little bit. And that is a good start for them. So they're not just rolling over and dying here in this best of three series, but instead we're having them slowly fighting back and saying, all right, boys, it was fun, but let's just make sure that we are having another chance in game number three to lock this qualifier in and those extra points, of course. And this is exactly what we want. I like the fighting spirit that I expect from a team on that caliber. So, can they pull it off? Yes or no? Let's find out. For now, what they're doing is they're just taking their camp. And each team walks therefore away with one of the pumpkin sets. Top side, Hogger. Hogger is always great for camp clear. I mean, the speed with which he can take pretty much any camp on any map always makes him a fantastic hero. The more mercenary camps you have on the map, the more in value he rises, which is apparently especially transparent if you're going for Garden of Terror. Ah, Rega gets burned to a crisp here. 
Okay, that was actually fairly close. If not for that last hit from uh, Blaze, he would probably have survived this, but this is now three kills to zero, and Oxygen Esports is playing a very, very different game than what we saw in the last one. Maybe the Rainer pick wasn't the way to go after all. So, uh, top side, you know, Swam Grotta against Copenhagen. Yeah, and the triple altar phase is now slowly coming up, so... Bit of a leading experience for the red team. Nothing really that leads to talent advantage just yet, but it might. Should be still a two-for-one trade. And honestly, if they just can delay it a little bit, Oxygen Esports should be the one to walk away with two once that they have the level 7 talent. So, yeah. Should happen. A big hit over here. And off we go. So, can they go a little bit deeper on this and maybe invade? Nah, not yet. Uh, well... Maybe they can. Few hits coming over here on the left side. One altar has been taken. The last one is still there. And no, not yet. Okay. All right. So they get two as expected. Level seven was just a little bit too close. It's a small time window, but it's still there. So yeah. By the way, since we talked about shitty movies earlier, one movie that was very, very good and that a lot of you might have missed. It's an older one, but I can heavily recommend it if you wanna watch a movie that's pretty uh, cool and. Uh, Interesting, shaking things up a bit with the, uh, yeah, this generic stuff that we're getting these days. Mr. Brooks, Kevin Costner, Mr. Brooks. If you have not watched that yet, and I think a lot of people missed that one, then I can heavily recommend that. So if you're looking for something to watch these days, this is definitely one you shouldn't miss out on. So three kills to zero. Bit of an advantage for the red team. Nothing too insane, but still, things are currently much better than they were in the first map. But of course, for Bang Bush, there's still plenty, plenty of time to improve a bit, gain some momentum. Level 10 abilities haven't even been locked in yet. So that's always a good indication that things can very quickly change rapidly. But there are already a few moves made by the blue team in an attempt to get finally the first kill here. They haven't gotten a single one yet. So, yep. Yeah, looking for those kills. Can't get them just yet, but they're losing another one. What the hell? They are making plays to get a kill, and now we have instead a drop against Hogger. He's down, and yeah, four kills to zero. Oxygen Esports with more and more action that really allows them to pull farther and farther ahead here. They got level 9, they got another good position on the map to get another altar in here. So, can they get another one? In experience, they're not that far ahead, and honestly, that's one of the most important parts right now. So, as long as you don't manage to do that, half a level is not a whole lot. So, things are still fine for the Bang Bush. That's a big thing to point out here. But level 10, of course, once that it drops, that's a problem. And even if it's a small gap that you have over your opponent, that can be a big, big lead. Bishops is able to get out. Nicely done. The fight continues, though. And Genji joins, whereas Lunara needs to retreat. So it's a five versus four. They will have to let this one go. I don't think they can fight back here. But they're trying. They're actually trying to poke this out a bit further. The problem is really that they are going to be the, the second team to hit level 10. So what are they going to try and accomplish here? The longer this lasts, the higher the chances for Oxygen Esports to get level 10. And of course, they know that too. So, yeah. No Beta Reno here. They're just trying to get the experience. But yes, there it is. Level 10. The only question is really material. Everything else is more or less a given. The shots are fired and we have them down at 28 to 36. Uh, Shockwave, Apocalypse, lots of CC. Light Bomb, of course, too. And the Sanctification to save the day for the red team when need be. But yeah, another little battle already happening. Arrows being thrown out here by Hanzo for the stun. A poke and a stun into a stun. But there's no follow-up instead. It's Nagrom that's in trouble. He gets attacked right away and there's no one here to save him. Ancestral was used earlier. So that is Diablo down. And this time for the duration, it wasn't quite fully stacked. So that's a problem for him. Yeah, and that's kill number five. It's actually kind of fascinating. After the dominant plays that they executed in the first game, they now struggle to get even a single kill in this game. We're already seven minutes into game number two here on Towers of Doom, and we're still waiting for the first kill for the blue team. 
Now, the one thing, like, look at the experience, by the way. This is actually really important because there's 2,500 extra experience for the red team thanks to the hero kills. And it's all more or less negated by the advantages in minion experience, structure experience, and also mercenary experience that we see for the blue team. So Bangbush is very, very close. They're only half a level behind. If at any point they're getting a kill or two, now that we're deeper in the game, they could be able to make a big play here and get the experience back. That was, by the way, a bit unfortunate. What a great start initially by Maiev to dodge out and then just to die again. As they're going for Azu, he's baiting them out a little bit further. But yeah, take a quick look at, at this one. So, so look at this. Arrow and also Light Bomb engaged. So there they retreat. Maiev is the target. And here comes everything. And he just dodges out it with a single Vault of the Warden just to fall a second later to Hanzo. So that kill shot happened. Shots are now getting fired and they're looking for even more. So Amkorora gets interrupted again and the same play continues that we've seen on the previous objective. Delay, delay, delay and get the next talent. That's what they're trying to do now. Get level 13, get the advantage. Pumpkins are moving through the bottom of the map to pressure the bell tower. And they're delaying. They can easily delay long enough. The next minion wave is already on the way. All they gotta do is move somebody in to take it. But off we go. Bunker had to be used. Alright. Quickly starting the burn. Oh, Lunara! No, she got hanzo Yeah, gets hanzo The shockwave was nice, but it wasn't good enough. Maybe now a kill. Can they go for Blaze? The stun from Hanzo. The sanctification. And it's another double kill. They go for another double kill here easily. And boy, there is, this is such a dominant play all of a sudden. 19 hit points left. As Diablo nearly dies, Hazobs is absolutely on point and fire right now. I mean, call him butter because he's on a roll. He's doing murderous damage here and it's just like killing them no matter how many angles are involved. So they go for another one. Hogger is down. Nick doesn't want to be put to shame by Hanzo. So he gets another kill too. Just here, a little bit of a reel from what we had in the last team fight. But yeah, look at that engage. Initially, the approach by the blue team as they're trying to get the kill. Then the arrow, it turns everything. They're losing two immediately, and of course, even more heroes than later on. Now everybody's just like trying to retreat here. And it's just bonkers, absolutely bonkers. 13 talents are in. The damage output, we got 44,000. And yeah, more plays being made now. And the bell tower, so they're taking this one back, but it's like 10 kills to zero. Two levels ahead. Comebacks on this map are always possible. I mean, again, it's a little... I know, I know, I know. It's a bit of a broken record, right? But at the same time, it's also true because this is the comeback map in the game. Momentum is everything. And once you get a dominant position, especially in the late game, it's really tricky to recover. But, of course, there is also an... I mean, there's an expiration date on this. At some point, you really gotta turn it around or at least make a first step towards the direction. And currently, we're not seeing that. The disc is missing. Can they get the kill? No, they cannot. Because Anduin is a killjoy. Instead, Lunara nearly dies to the arrow. Survives a second longer. Bishops has to reposition himself and gets murdered by Hazu. Hazu is just absolutely crushing it today. It's incredible. This game has been an absolute pleasure to watch. Thanks to him and others, of course. But the, the kind of plays that he executed. How he always like targets heroes, follows up. And is able to get the kill after all. It was incredible. Now they kill Diablo and drop his souls. 16 is on the board for them, so they got the extra talents. Genji in this case going for the steady blade, and we got 12 kills to zero. Another channel at the top, they're dropping them now down to 16. The only good news here was really for the blue team that at least they've got one altar. That's the only thing that they got, but they should cherish it while it lasts. Now we're having uh, another hit coming in with a camp that could be ex uh, escorted into it. 16 talents is such a big advantage that they are not going to shy away from a fight for quite some time now. So, uh, yeah. How exactly is the blue team going to bring this back? It's not impossible, but they need kills and they need them desperately. And they haven't gotten a single one in the 12 minutes that this game has been lasting. So, if they don't change something soon, then this is going to be a, a three map up between the two teams. And I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm definitely here for it. I wouldn't mind getting another one. But yes, there's the pumpkins making their way through. 
Only chance for the Bang Bush is to get a level 16 and then uh, not die until 16 and then fight with 16 versus 16. That's the play right now. And it's the triple altar phase that is coming up next. So this is really the moment where you have to make your move. But they're going to get that experience. They're going to get their experience and they are going to get their chance. Can they use it though? Top side, yeah, so Amkorota is on a, also getting another camp. Good for them. Autos are activating. They're easily going to get 16 for for it. But let's see what they can pull off with this. We got the Synergy with the Totems. The 1, 4, and 16 are now ready. We get the Headbanger. I mean, there's quite a few people, I'd say, that banged their head into a few walls as it's continued. But yeah, Hanzo gets saved. Bishop's got attacked. The move. Is this it? No. Another save by Ando. And he used both of his charges. Both of the charge that this was a level 20 talent at some point. And they just were like, nah, it's fine. <laughs> Let's move it a little bit further. No problem with that at all. Yeah, top side, they're still oh, okay, so they get this one. One gets used, four shots, and he can interrupt. That's actually not bad. That's buying them a little bit more time. This is an easy one for them to defend. So currently there's only a single altar that Oxygen Oxygen Esport gets. And this is a good position to fight over them. Yeah, Ancestral had to be used to keep Diablo alive. Stacked to 61. Yeah, arrow. And Skog makes it out. But time is working in favor of Oxygen Esports. And they're killing my F2. My F is dead. And no. Sanctification. X-Strike. A kill against Hogger. It just doesn't end, does it now? 12 points to 24, and they have level 19. 14 kills to 0. That you go for the boss next is obviously a given. I mean, there's nobody that can threaten you in either way, shape, or form. So they pull that one off too. But yeah, it's getting a bit crazy here. I mean, can we at least get one kill for the Bang Bush? Shots are fired, so that puts them down into the single digits. They have only 8 points left. And the next altar phase is going to spawn a single altar. So they can survive for a bit longer. But guys, they're two levels behind. And we are about to hit level 20 on the red team. Yeah. Oof, I mean... Yeah, taking that at the top would be nice. Even that didn't work out. And he's dead. Blaze is dead. There's no way, right? Yeah, he already got hit. He at least takes it. So that's good. But he's going to fall. Level 20, it's going to be a big... You're fucking kidding me. How can they not even get a single kill here? Hoga is dead again, and they're just not losing anyone. They're not losing anyone here. Skork is dead to five... Po oh, boy. Another play, this time for Genji! And he gets saved again! Yasu, for fuck's sake, can't you just let one of them die? Just to shake things up a little bit, you know? Just to just to go for something different here for once. I mean, it's getting a little bit boring, you know? <laughs> it's ridiculous, it's only ridiculous. They have level 20 now. They're getting 5 points of the opponent's score. That puts them down to 3. A single boss, a single altar, a couple of pumpkins that make it through will end the game here. I honestly don't even know if the Bang Bush is at this point even faced by this. I mean, at some point it becomes funny, right? At some point it just becomes funny how you're not able to get a single kill in the game. And I think we are very, very quickly approaching that point. So they gotta stop this up at the top. And yeah, 67,000 damage now by Genji. Just to put this in perspective, this is nearly doubling the damage amount that th he has as much damage as the top two damage dealers for the blue team. That's where we're at. That's where we're at right now. All right. The action is coming in. Yep. There's a the bunker. They're trying to retake the bell tower. They get the bell tower down here for sure. They still hold on to the one at the top, by the way. Arrow missing. Honestly, I think that was a mercy arrow. Hazu was just sitting there. I was listening. Yeah, okay. I'm going to miss one. Let's make them feel a little bit better. I'm going to miss this one real quickly. And then, I don't know, maybe they're not rage quitting the game and we can play game number three. Jesus, what a game. What a contrast in games also between map number one and map number two. Here they come again. Diablo, Diablo who? Exactly. So Dibbles is down. Now Bambi is trying to somehow survive through this. 
They go for Hazu. Apparently, it said guys at least get a kill. But that doesn't work out either for them. Hazu is still alive. How is he not dead? They get a hogger. Uh, he's still alive too. Wall's done. Yes. Woo. There it is. The kill. That was the big play right there. Nagrom pulls it off. Nagrom gets the kill. He makes it happen for the team. They get one kill at least. 1 to 21. They even get a few shots fired over here. But now the red team is obviously going to finish what they started. We're going to game number three, everybody. This is it. Game number two. A big victory for Oxygen Esports as they absolutely murder the Bang Bush. GG and well played. Game number three. We had two very, very different games. And now it all accumulates in a finale on Dragonshire. Our third map in the series between Oxygen Esports and the Bang Bush. I'm very curious about the draft now. First one obviously didn't work out for Oxygen. <laughs> There's the Tyriel ban, alright. So they get rid of them real quickly. And the Brightwing ban here. There's a couple of heroes that are definitely having a big of an impact here. I mean, by the way, this is another map where, for example, Muradin can be really strong at the front line. We could see a Tracer again, Genji, the rotations to the top lane. Not quite sure if they are going to be afraid of Medivh on a map like Dragonshire, but rotations between the lanes and speeding them up with Lucio or whatnot is always dangerous. It's really a problem because you cannot ban everything that you want on this map. There's also the top lane to consider, where oftentimes Rexa is playing a big role. But yes, here we got it. We got the ban on Lucio. Rega gets banned. So a lot of supports that are getting addressed currently. Mm -hmm. But yeah, with that, we have the first pick for the blue team. And again, qualifier finale, right? So this is all about the points for the leaderboards. They can slowly establish a position to qualify for the playoffs. And then also have a good playoff seeding position. But we're still in the qualifiers. But in this particular qualifier, qualifier number five, one of these two teams is now going to lock in the victory. And Bishops is picking Hanzo very quickly. Yeah, this time he gets his Hanzo. And they are sacrificing the first pick for it. Oh, Yasu with Karazim. We're going aggressive here. Yep, that is going to be some deep dive. Might even lead to an Anubarak pick, honestly, all things considered. If they wanted to dive in deep for aggression, they could make that work too. Maybe even pop... Genji as another hero. There's a couple of things that Kitty could definitely now do. But that's a very aggressive opening. Of course, consider that some of the reasons why Karazim got picked so early is that so many supports were already banned. There's never going to be a full support choke, but still, you can guide a little bit the direction this is going. The Haka for the top lane. So this also means that we don't get a Rexa. No King of Dragonshire on this map. But we get the Haka for the global. And we got Jojo. It's the first time, if I'm not mistaken that he voluntarily switches away from Diablo. Yeah. Do they ban Medivh again? No. They're not worried about that. But they get rid of Mayev. That was played twice in a row now. Mixed results, as I said. But it seems that they are want that they want to eliminate some of their preference picks and get rid of that. But yeah. Okay, on the other hand What's being banned against Nick? Or do they target the front line? They already have that tank, so they could also ban the tank up, but no, they go get rid of Junkrat. It's a good one. I actually did miss that they didn't get rid of him yet, and Junkrat, of course, can be played by Hazu very easily, and every single time that you have uh, a stun and he gets a mine probably positioned, then you can isolate a target too easily. That's time for the double pick here. Okay. Nick is probably going to pick last. It's hammer time again. Now, we got Jojo for a blind. Sergeant Hammer and Muradin. I mean, you see this more or less coming, I suppose. With how many people already ban the sergeant against them. Yeah, the Germans. They're good with the Panzer. And Hazu just got the tank. Okay, so... Hogger! 
And Anduin, which means triple front line. Anduin also taken. And they got Hogger now could play harder pulled here. Could even combo that off with a uh, light bomb again. The Haka that can come in from the side, but it's going to be all about Sergeant Hammer here. And if anybody dives in a bit too deep, then the seven sided strike of Karazim, if he goes down that path, can punish them very quickly, especially with the stuns that are there. Nick, he can always take Hammer, but yeah, we'll see. So, with that, the final pick for the final map. Game number three, it's Sylvanas, everybody. Let's go, Dragonshire, the finale of the grand final hit qualifier number five. Bangbush against Oxygen Esports. We're on game number three. Uh, Henning is playing Anduin. Bishops is playing Hanzo. We got Nagrom on Johanna this time. Skok on Hoga. And Svamgrotta on Dehaka. Right side of the map, it's Hazo, Ops on Sergeant Hammer, Yazu on Karazim, Bad Benny playing Muradin, Nick on Sylvanas, and Copenhagen is playing Blaze. Okay, now it's the moment of truth. Which team is going to decide this one in their favor? Which team is going to get all those points for the leaderboard? Is it going to be the blue team, or are we going to have a successful play here by Oxygen as they're already looking to split Sergeant Hammer and Sylvanas so that they can quickly push on two lanes and get some structural damage in before anything else is happening. So, yeah, <laughs> they want the kill. They do get the Haka. And that's again a nice start here for Oxygen Esports. What the blue team of course was trying to do is rotate so that they can detect where exactly Sylvanas is trying to push for a wall and then deal with it, but since they just lost their side lane, now that's gonna... that's made a lot more tricky. And, well, that's one tower gone, a gate nearly destroyed, and a second tower taking damage, whereas down at the bottom of the map, Hazu is playing against bishops. So already a great start. Already a fantastic start right there. So, yeah. One kill to zero. And still the one we won here. Hazu is not really looking too good, so that might be a counter kill. But they can't intercept him. Bishops wants the kill though. He really wants it and he gets it. Proving that he's not the that Hazu's not the only Hanzo player that knows what he's doing. But unfortunately for him, there was no way for him to get out of the situation anymore. So yeah. Nicely done. Really, really well done. I mean, honestly, I think it's totally worth it. He didn't know that there were come some heroes coming in from the top, so this is a kill that could have worked out for him and he might still have been able to get out. Kill for a kill, totally cool. Nicely done by bishops, but of course it would have been a lot more epic if he would have been able to save himself. The double altars, double shrines in favor of the blue team, not really a good thing for Oxygen Esports, P applies a bit more pressure. Can't really deal with it just yet. But there's also no real way for the Bang Bush to get the first objective and lock the Dragonite in. So there's that. And here we go. We got up at the top. Quick dash. Yasu is there. And in we go. They try to go for Nick, but they can't get him. There's the stun and nearly another kill. Do they get it? <laughs> he gets out. <laughs> nice. Well done. They are able to make their way out of the fight and save Hogger. I gotta say I'm impressed. I really thought that he would die. I was already planning his funeral and everything. Yeah, but nope, he made it out. Down to the bottom of the map. Still a bit more damage against Hazu. Nah, nice condemn, a little bit of blocking. Bishops. The problem was that Yazu is already on the way, so you want to make sure that you get out as quickly or you might actually be the one dying here. So the Haka is at the top. They get the double control again. And yes, I like it. Two kills to one. And there's a lot of back and forth plays with a lot of rotations happening to try and set ganks up on either team. We have control on the shrines being exchanged. Especially Yazo with Karazim is pulling a bit of a smexy as he's diving in with one punch after another, always trying to get the kills here. But yes, it's, it's an, it, this is so far a game that is worthy the third map of a final, but there is the lead now that Oxygen Esports gets a kill in the mid lane against Johanna. Three kills to one, early level seven, maybe an opportunity to now also get control over these shrines and push for an objective. So, yeah, we'll see if that's gonna work out. Anduin is dead, and this is a little bit reminiscent of what happened in game number two, I gotta say. 
I mean, with the early kill from the bang bush, I guess that's a bit of a difference. But then at the same time, this is starting to get quite nasty. The Haka comes in. Everybody's low on the red team, so they might get a kill on Bad Benny. Yes, they do. Hazu made it out, though. But another drag connects, and that's great. Yasu is dashing out and is still getting Hanzo. Yeah, Bishop saw that one coming from a mile away. And Hazu also escaping here, but they were hoping that they get a playing kill here somehow. Now, the problem for them is that during all of these little plays down at the bottom of the map, the top lane was pressured further, which in this case means that the fort is nearly destroyed. Now, Swam Grotta was hoping for a drag, and he couldn't quite get this one. But, yep, down here, we have the attack still coming. And that is that. Attack at the camp. They lock this one in. Maybe they can also now use Hanzo to push through that bottom wall a bit. But I'm at least relieved that the blue team is now getting a couple of kills because after we had that four kills to one situation, I was already afraid that we would have a replay of game number two. But no, they are definitely going for that that uh, back and forth play that we were all hoping for for the third map. With Hazu now also committing to the regenerative biosteel and the Hava Siege mode, so he's using the same build as Nick has been using for a while. There is a little experience for the blue team that is definitely going to help them to get to an early level 10. I like the move against Murden here. Damn, Benny got absolutely surprised by this. And it could have been a Dragonite if not for Yasu at the bot lane. But. I'm not sure if he can hold it. The good news for them is that the Copenhagen has now started to take control over the top. So, yes, no easy objective for the blue team. Nicely done. And it's a fun one. It's a real fun one. Four kills to four. Level lead barely for the bang bush. They're now with the shield going for a kill, but they can't. And they lose Jojo instead. <laughs> Oxygen eSport. Nice. That was a cool play, though. Making sure that Karazim survived. But the idea was there. I mean, the idea was a good one, to be absolutely frank with you. He, they went in with a blessed shield, then the light bomb. Just like the timing was off a bit. If not for that, they could have extended that stun further and maybe drop him. Which would also have meant that they likely would have survived this one. But, yeah, it completely backfired on them. So, uh, right now, it's four kills to five. The Haka is dead at the top. And it's apparently time for Oxygen Esports again to fight back here. And they are also... Oh, oh, such an hammer. Hammer! Hammer! He's dead. Hazu is dead. No Dragonite to be taken. Yep, in the middle of the map, we're still having uh, Jojo guarding the spot. We're now six and a half minutes into the game, and we haven't seen a single one of the objectives claimed yet. Siege Shines are now taken, and Blaze is able to take the top lane out, which means the fountain is gone, so no lane sustain anymore for the Bang Bush. Nicely done. So, yep, not too shabby. Okay, Copenhagen. The stun, forcing the bunker. Isolation, he actually, he actually dodged it. But it doesn't matter. He's going to die anyways. There's too many of them. There are too many of them. They're like locusts. They are everywhere. Muradin with the attempt at an interrupt. Immediately shut down. Nothing he can do here. And Dehaka retakes the top shrine. I like this one. This is real fun. Six kills to six. 12 to 12. Everybody is looking for their kills here. Henning is trying to rush out. As Hoga is doing what he does best. Pogging around. Going for the wild spin to get them another camp. The Haka already pushing the top lane out further. And as Karazim is about to retake the bottom shrine. There is now a bit more camp control for the bang bush. That they're trying to use to push the top lane. They lost the fort. But they're fighting back tooth and nail here. Teams are fighting for every single inch of the map, and I am absolutely here for it. Yeah, Stormball is there. Karazim with a follow-up on uh, Anduin. And in comes the play to zone them out a bit with the Meme Strike. And Meme Strike is obviously going to get a lot more value if they're ever making it to level 20. With a cooldown reduction, you can YOLO that shit out every... I mean, what feels like every five, four or five seconds. So, with a level 4 for Hogger, we now have 48 stacks here on his Brute Force, by the way. Bot lane gets pressured. Keep that top lane camp in mind, too. Yeah, gets taken out by the towers here eventually, but it still keeps the lane at bay. And down here, Siege Times have already been taken, but they're trying to push in against the, the fort. And they're doing damage. And the Haka is rotating, as does Blaze. A bit of a lockdown here. Horder pulled already used as Skok is trying to close the gap. Not quite. 
They're wrapping around. Where's that Stormbolt when you need it? Jet Propulsion could follow up. And Hogger spins away using the unstoppable frames to escape. So he's about to get away here. And... Yep. What else? 23,000 damage for both Hanzo and Sergeant Hammer. <laughs> The Arga is still all the way at the top lane. He's soon going to join the fight here at the bottom, I believe. But look at the value! They kill on Anduin, but Bishops with so much damage against all three of them. It's not enough to get a kill, though. And now they're getting farmed, aren't they? There's the kill on Johanna. Everybody was low on the red team, but they just could not get that coordinated attack going that would have helped them with a the kill. And they just lost the third hero in that encounter. Nine kills to six. This might be the beginning of the first Dragonite. And therefore, more push power. Down to the bottom of the map. Off we go. Camp gets locked in very quickly. Murden is taking control of the top shrine. And this is looking like either we're going to lose that bottom uh, fort on the blue team side. Or the objective is being taken. And I don't see anybody making a play for either the middle or for anything else. The hero minion over here with a bit of an interrupt attempt. But there it is. Dragonite number one. And level 16 any second. A sergeant hammer is pushing the bot lane with an napalm on level 10. 16 is ready. Even boosting away here as the top lane gets pressure too. They're everywhere at this point. They're absolutely everywhere. They're attacking at the bot lane. They're attacking at the middle. And even the bridge of death at the top isn't safe. Hogger is sitting at the side here. Waiting to see if he can help out. They're getting the mind control in. And bye bye Svamgrotta. Yes? No? He's trying to survive and pop the essence too. But Benny has to go for the avatar. They're still pogging this out. But also, this means that they're abandoning the rest of the map. So yes, Muradin is going to die. But the fort in the mid lane just fell. Partly because of it. And now the Dragonite is easily rotating down to the bottom of the map. And they're going to get another structure. They're going to get this one too. Yes, they killed Muradin. Congratulations. But what did you give up in response to that? They lost too much. 4v4 in a... Well, actually, it's a 5v3 right now. Sergeant Emma's just now coming in. They're trying to go for Blaze, and they're going to drop him too. Blaze, is that a... Nah, there's no way. There's no way. Oh, way! Hello? You're kidding me, right? What the fuck? <laughs> the Juke Master 2000! Hail to the king, baby. <laughs> How the hell did he survive that? I was like, nah, he's just delaying it. He's gonna die anyways. And then this happens. Jeez. Mechanical know-how is in. We got the cleansing dodge. But yeah, when he dodged Bishop's shot with Hanzo and then just moved out of it and slowed them down. Ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. What a play. What a chat. He's going full boss mode on that. <laughs> I mean, you gotta give the kid credit. That was pretty impressive. And they thought they had it. You know they thought they had it. They were 100% certain that there's no way they're not getting the kill. And then all of a sudden they were like, wait a second. Don't tell me. So yeah, that is quite a blow to the opponent's uh, confidence. But anyways, they're not giving up yet. They lost every single fort, but they're trying to bring it back now by destroying the one at the bottom of the map and escorting Siege Giants in. And to be fair to the Bang Bush, they are very close in experience still. So the passive experience gained for Oxygen Esports is of course now skyrocketing, but this game isn't over yet. They get some damage in, they're also isolating Muradin a little bit, but Hoga! Hoga is dead! Hoga is down, Oxygen Esports. They lost the first map. It was a disaster. They drafted Jimmy and it just didn't work out for them. They then secured themselves a victory on the second map of the series. And now in game three, they are looking better and better and better. They haven't won it yet, but they're looking good. 10 kills to 7. Half a level lead, a little bit more than that. And yes, it's all about the next objective now. So, they're going to try and make their play here. 46,000 damage by Hanzo. 36,000 by Sergeant Hammer. And they want the dinosaur. The drag is missing. He hopped out. I don't think they realized initially when they moved up there how many heroes were in the vicinity. Now the Haka is at the bot lane. Trying to ensure that they're not pressuring uh, the objective. So, yep. Just a bit of poke happening. The problem for the Bangbush is that they're running a bit out of time. Unless they are okay going up against a level 20 talent advantage. 
Now they got the Haka, so there's a certain ring around of Ro uh, ring around the Rosie play that they can um, uh, pull into once that the twenty is there, just to buy time for them to get some experience as well and equalize the talents. But yeah, if they want to have a fight, then they should take it soon. So there's the drag. Already going for it, but then the stun and the lock on Jojo. The ult used by ah, by Hanzo, but it's just not enough. If, get, they, if they get level 20 for Hanzo, then maybe the cooldown reduction is going to be enough for them. But not right now. So here we have it. Another play. Bunker is being used too. 5 versus 5. They go for the drag. It's the battle before level 20, everybody. The battle before level 20. And a lot of ults have already been thrown out there. Big ults incoming, and it's an entire level lead, but it just doesn't do anything for the Bang Bush. They are not in a spot where they can do a lot here, so instead they're trying to play around them, control the objective long enough for them to get level 20, as we already have the advanced Lava Strike. We got the Rewind down to the bottom of the map. That's, of course, now one that got claimed. Dark Lady's call is in. Ooh, Fortified Bunker and the Epiphany. Yeah, but they're getting close. Half a level. Half a level and they got level 20. And that's going to be some fantastic upgrades. Hanzo in particular with the cooldown reduction is going to be a huge asset in these fights. Okay, they go for the fight. Oh, <laughs> what an ult. Nice. Yeah, that one was pretty sexy. He lined that up perfectly. Doesn't get much better than that. So yeah, check this one out. Hanzo coming in, Bishops. Bad Benny is now also about to die, gets the Avatar. But that was glorious. They completely blocked him off. The Dragonite is taken though. So the Dragonite got slugged in by Blaze, but they got level 20 now. But the battle isn't over. The Haka is already following in it. Dark Lady's Call has been used. They just can't get that additional kill here. But the Dragonite is trying to do some damage in the middle of the map. Now the cooldown reduction is in with the Dragon Awakens. We also got the Inner Fire. Don't think that the keep is going to fall here. They just don't have enough, I suppose. Well, Bishops? Bishops is getting rewind and everything. Yeah, he gets dropped. The rewind was too much. The double Stormbolt was too much for him to handle. So the counter kill. Nice. Quick counter kill against Karazim. Swamp Grotta has to waddle away from the towers as the Dragonite is using him as a football and just punts him into double tower range. But they couldn't get anything with this. This Dragonite didn't do a whole lot for them. They opened the wall up in the middle. But besides that, there's little that they accomplished here. So now it's 9 kills to 11. It comes down to the wire on this one. Absolutely. I mean, damn. This game. 30 seconds for Hanzo to come back. 70,000 damage for him. If not for the Rewind on Muradin, he would have, by the way, survived through that little encounter that they had there. But the Rewind was just too much. He just had no chance after the second Storm Bolt hit home. Oh, <laughs> that was a nice one too. Yeah, that Storm Bolt made Muradin happy, it made Team Oxygen happy, and it made Hanzo's dentist happy. That's a lot of dental work that you need after one of those hits your face. So, yeah, Hogger's still pogging. Hanzo is back. Yeah, and the stage is set for an awesome late game. Big structural advantage for Oxygen Esports. They took all three forts down, whereas Bangbush only eliminated a single one. But late game objectives. These bad boys are scaling. That battle axe is going to hit harder and harder and harder. Stormbolt misses. Seven-sided. There it is. Hanzo with the ult. Trying to burn that down a little bit and zoning them away from that fight. Big damage incoming and of course the cooldown reduction. Hanzo nearly has another one ready. Henning, he's in trouble in the back line. Yeah, Bad Benny doing his best and another. Here comes another ult from Hanzo. Again, he's getting the cooldown reduction time and time again and he can just zone them away. It's not only about the damage output that they're getting with the ult on Hanzo. It's also about trying to claim the position. Trying to get yourself into a much better spot compared to your opponent. The attack is there again. Hanzo, he has another one. He has another one. It gets shot out. And they get the kill on Sergeant Hammer. Ah, the big pog. Hoga dies, but he killed. He helped to kill Karazim. That might have just been worth it. This is, of course, a bit of a problem. They got to decide what they want to do now. And they're moving back. They're moving back home. They're not going for a push at the bottom keep. And that's they're trying to use their four versus three situation on the map to steal some of... Benny? Hello? Benny a little bit aggressive here. Yeah, they get the camp. 
Dark Lady is called the safe and the kill against Meriden. Bad Benny turns into Dead Benny. Dead Benny is deaded. The top keep, it survives, and all of a sudden it's 12 kills to 12, level 22 to 22, and we are talking objective. That's a Dragonite. That's gonna be a Dragonite right here. What can they do with it? 19 minutes in, they still gotta deal with the keeps a little bit. They still gotta deal with the one in the mid lane, and it seems like they're just going for it right now. They're going through the bottom of the map, but oh boy, they're gonna... <laughs> it's too close! But it survives. This was too close. Yeah, it's still fine here. They're gonna try and take the keep. They go for Coburn. And again, it is Hanzo with one ult after another. 91,000 damage. Nick getting an ass kicking on Sylvanas. They want that keep. And they're likely gonna get it. But this game is going to get absolutely nasty at this point. The cooldown reduction from Hanzo. Look at this. He has it back already. The keep is gone. They got the keep. They got the keep. They need to take these forts down too. It's nice that you now have a straight shot at the opponent's core, but you need to do a little bit more. You need to try and make sure that the rest of your lanes is not getting pressured against you all this time. So yeah, Dragonite again doing a bit of damage. Maybe not enough to take you down right away, but there's another ult completely zoning them away from the entrance. Muradin is moving in and gets kicked away. Activates the rewind too, but it's already out of the fight, at least for now. Dehaka up at the top. Four now. 100,000 damage and ult after ult is being your lord out by Hanzo. Here comes the mind control and he's dead. Mind control didn't what it was supposed to and then Blaze dies. Yasu is getting drop no yes they drop him and sylvanas died as well sylvanas is down at least benny is able to take hogger apart but sergeant hammer just died as well at the bot lane guys this is looking like it's gonna be in bang is gonna make the play for the core right here it's a four versus one benny is the only survivor that's just not enough catapults are making it in slowly we're already at the 21 minute mark that's way too much damage for them to handle a drag on muradin the shield is already falling one catapult has taken aim. Benny, what can he do? He needs to buy 30 seconds. There's no fucking way. And he's dead as well. Bang push. They pull it off. They drop Chili Mountain in the semi-final. And now they're going for the big W on Dragonshire as they decide the series against Oxygen Esports in their favor. GG and well done.